Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to talk to you about different talent builds in the raid Vault of Incarnates for Feral Druid and talk about why I think certain builds are going to be strong and what I would recommend for you to play uh, at least very early on. We will of course know what the best in slot builds, the absolute best way of killing these bosses are in time when we get enough data and we get enough people actually progressing these bosses and see what outperforms other things. But you can always sim, go for it, go treat yourself. I personally am not going to be simming myself that regularly, I don't think, for these bosses. I'm just going to be playing things and see how they feel. Uh, but going into it then, I also wanted to mention that I stream over on twitch.tv slash cyber underscore TV. Link in the description, so come check me out live and ask all your questions and come check me do Mythic Plus and Raid Prog and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but for now, we'll jump in. We'll start with Erinog. So Erinog on Mythic. I I'm going to focus most of these uh, bosses on Mythic. Uh, because I think that's the one that really like matters um, and a heads up as well I'm using mythic trap so just google mythic trap if you want to use this site as well it's really really helpful to see all the different bosses mechanics and everything like that but basically mythic Aranog um, is similar to the other difficulties of the fight where you have these ads that are going to be spawning intermittently from the flame rift but then every flame rift you're also going to be getting a mini boss ad and this mini boss ad from the greater flame rift uh, obviously it's a bit chunky, it has a bit more health, but also has an interrupt. So you're going to need to focus these mobs down because you need to kill them before the next mob is going to spawn. So you have this aspect of kind of like a, a, a heavy single target with a cleave and then also a burst AoE and then also the intermission stage where you have burst single target. So there's actually quite a lot of fight variance in this fight. Uh, so I do quite like it from a design standpoint, but in terms of the build, this is what I'm looking at here. So I am taking Primal Wrath because I think it's worth killing the adds with Primal Wrath. Uh, but I'm not taking Apex because I don't think they will live long enough for you to get meaningful Apex use. But I could be wrong and it could be that Apex actually ends up outperforming, say, something like a second CI or a Feral Frenzy. And you can take that choice there if you want to. Um, but I've taken Primal Wrath. I've also taken Tear Open Wound and Rampant Ferocity for two good reasons. It's going to reduce the amount of talent, or going to, you know, give me two additional talent points because I've not had to go two into Taste or two into Sudden. I can just go one into Rampant, one into Tear. So I can use extra talent points uh, in this section, and it allows me to get things like Infected Wounds and MOC and, st uh, and those kind of things additionally. So that's why I've gone for these but I haven't really invested in, like, Apex. I've gone Double Clawed Rake, but I think that you could play Double Clawed Rake or Lunar Inspiration, depending on Mythic or Heroic. I think that Mythic probably calls for Double Clawed Rake, because you're going to have the mini boss ad that you're going to be wanting to rake. You don't need Double Clawed Rake for that. You can just do two separate rakes, but I kind of like the idea of Double Clawed Rake uh, just because I like it. Um, particularly if you didn't end up grabbing up a sudden ambush as well, if you wanted to, even just one point in that is good. You know, maybe you drop infected and you go one on sudden or something. I don't know, something like that. Um, but in heroic or any other difficulty, I think lunar inspiration is going to be good because you can just get additional single target on the boss and you don't really need double called rake in that instance, right? The reason why you're making that decision between double called rake or lunar inspiration is because I don't think that you need tireless energy on Kuro, um, on Aranog, because you have so much Predator reset, Tiger Fury reset from the adds dying, the smallies, so I don't feel like you need tireless energy. If we play it and you do, then yes, you can drop Double Cord Rake or Luna and you can grab that. Apart from that, Brutal Slash, Burst Single Target, Burst AoE, Burst, 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 good. Um, Feral Frenzy for the ad that you've got to kill. Also, Two Minute Convoke lines up with Two Minute Berserk, so you've got Feral Frenzy and you've got Convoke to burst down the adds burst down uh, the intermission ads you just have that potential there um circle blood talons of course these things are great double ci yep all those things those should all kind of make sense and then i've got a demo c and infected because they're also good um next boss is going to be teros so teros is a pure single target boss and that's what i've got this build for he, he's just pure single target i don't know on the other difficulties but mythic he's definitely pure single target and uh, I don't know, there's some finicky stuff. You might, in, me in melee, you might be okay to just purely AFK and stand purely in melee and not have any problems, in which case um, you might not need to go Lunar Inspiration. You could probably just go a double tireless energy if you if you want to. 
I might take Lunar Inspiration, depending on, you know, the aspect of heavy movement on that fight. So I'm keeping that in mind. I've not gone for Primal Wrath. A lot of people are talking about this Primal Wrath pure single target build that does more damage than ripping and ferocious biting and you just Primal Wrath spam. I think it's cringe. I don't like the idea of it. It goes against, you know, <laughs> the idea of the spec. So I don't like it. So I'm personally not going to be playing it. I'm going to be playing this instead. I go two Taste of Blood, two Sudden Ambush. It's a lot more expensive, so I can't get infected or moment, but it is what it is. I do end up getting Two Minute Convoke, Feral Frenzy, and Adaptive Swarm, though. And that's why I like Lunar Inspiration as well, actually. If I wasn't going to go Adaptive, if I was going to go something else instead, I'm trying to think of what else you could go. But if I wasn't going to go Adaptive, say I was going to go One Minute Convoke, then I could probably drop Lunar Inspiration and not take that and go Double Tireless instead. But because I'm running Adaptive, it complements more bleeds, more dots. So that's why I've taken Luna, taken Feral Frenzy, and then, yeah, Convoke us up. So just pure single target. you got Blood Talons, uh, got Blood Talons, got Brutal Slash, got uh, uh, Raging Fury and stuff like that. So, something to note as well, actually, with Aranog is you can probably run a, uh, run with Tiger Snasty in theory because you're getting so many Predator resets. But, you know, I'll leave that decision up to you guys. Uh, the next boss is Senoth. So Senoth, really super easy. This is just going to basically be the same as Aranog. Um, I can't remember what my Aranog build is called. I think it's the Burst Cleave one. So, basically going to be the same as Aranog. Uh, the fight is very similar. It has a mini boss ad that you can kill. It also has um, small ads that are going to die very quickly. So, again, maybe not worth, worth taking Apex. But going to be very, very similar. You're going to have this ad you want to burst down. You're going to have the boss that you're wanting to kill this is heavy movement though and sometimes the boss actually dips out of your ability to attack them so you could maybe even opt for lunar inspiration as well if you really wanted to again it just means more uptime on things on dots so i think that's quite good primal council the way this fight is going to work is that it's an extended four target cleave you you have to kill all four bosses at the same time um and also they um they they're just four of them and then fight the whole whole time all stacked up on top of each other so for this fight i've not opted for anything like feral frenzy it keeps my damage very consistent there's no need for like burst on this fight you want to kill everything quite evenly done things like primal wrath double clawed rake of course because now i can two in two rakes everything's dotted which is nice i could opt for a sudden ambush maybe but i feel like i'd want two sudden ambush for it to really be the value there um so i've not gone for it i've gone rampant and like tear open wound obviously now, Apex definitely comes in here as being really, really good. I did find in my testing that Blood Talons might actually be quite annoying to play, though, with Apex and constant procs and stuff. So you could go for Lion Strength, but Blood Talons is probably going to be better if you can min-max it. But uh, Lion Strength is definitely a, a, an option there. And then, yeah, I've just got Unbridled Swarm, just spreading a bunch of swarms. I've gone one Carnivorous so that then I can get the Apex there. And then I've taken off a Feral Frenzy so I can get the Unbridled there. So that's where I've moved things around at the bottom of the tree. Still getting things like MOC and Infected Wounds. Um, you could, in theory, go Luna. I would not recommend it. You're not going to have mobs dying, so you're going to want one in Tireless. So that means that you can't put a point in Merciless. And you want Double Cord Break, which means you can't put the point in Lunar Inspiration. So this kind of seems like the build you're going to have to play um and then the middle section yeah uh i think it's just pretty standard so that is primal council dathia is a boss where you have a you know pure single target boss and then intermittently you're gonna have a big boss boss mod mob that gets summoned and then you kill that mob and then certain people will get sent over to a platform and on that platform there's burst aoe that you have to do i think it's something like seven mobs that you have to kill uh, so, and you want to kill them quite evenly. So, um, it depends in this fight whether you are the group. It depends on how people do this boss. You might send everyone over to the platform every time. I very much doubt it. I think you will send a selection of people over to the group, uh, over to the platform every time and have a core group with high single target damage that just stay on the, the boss platform. I think Feral would be better suited for that burst AoE job and going over to the platform. But if you weren't going over to the platform, I would I would recommend a pure single target build. So the exact same as um, the exact same as we did for Teros, I would do that pure single target. If you're not going over to the platform, 
Uh, yeah, th then you do that. If you are going over to the platform, then you want a burst cleave build, not an extended cleave build. I think uh, I did show correctly my extended cleave for... Uh, yeah, I definitely did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is my burst cleave for for Dathia. I would keep it very similar. You could probably drop Double Cord Rake, and you could probably even take Lunar Inspiration or Tireless. I don't think Double Cord Rake will come in too handy when you go over to the platform. You'll be killing the mobs probably quite quickly, especially uh, later into the into the patch. Uh, everything else pretty standard though i wouldn't go and bridled you're not killing like mobs aren't up long enough and stuff i would just go probably burst you can in theory go apex it might be worth to go apex actually and you could drop feral frenzy instead and go apex i think that might be better for dathia personally if you're going over to the platform um so you can make that decision play around with it and see how you feel kurog is interesting he's like a pure single target and then intermittently there's gonna be i mean i have a very special i've just like a, have a specific build for kirog but he's a single target build and then you're also gonna have these mini boss ads that some that get summoned in like an intermission so sometimes you're gonna have one ad sometimes you're gonna have multiple ads and then there are also times where you have mobs that split into multiple like several smaller ads that you can kill quite quickly so there's a little bit of everything on this fight again but I think that single target is, I think single target is probably going to be the most important thing because when he gets to a certain health percentage and you go into phase three, um, you know, once he's in phase three, then you're going to have uh, a burst phase and like you need to kill him before he kills you, before he enrages basically too much. So that's why I want like more just single target because I think going into the last stage, that's where the damage is going to count um and i think yeah no okay thing was bringing yeah i think that you're gonna want things like unbridled or you know adaptive but not unbridled i think adaptive's good blood town's good two minute convoke i think you could drop convoke if you wanted to and go something else instead i just don't think there's anything with better value i i personally think two minute convoke is really good especially when you can get adaptive as well i'm taking things like double cord rake because there are going to be multiple ads i've taken luna I've taken tireless, but I've not got things like MOC or infected. So that's how I've gotten the value to get Luna. Because as well, oh, this is something to mention as well with Kurog. He has a lot of um he has a lot of situations where you have to move out, even as Melee, like you're gonna have to move out. So it's gonna be quite good, I think, to have Luna Inspiration to allow you to continue to, you know, not overcap on combo points and also to um Oh, sorry, to not overcap on energy and also to generate combo points. I think Lunar Inspiration should be good. Have high uptime on that. So that's why I like Lunar Inspiration. As I mentioned, Double Cord Rake for the ads. Uh, don't have Infected or MOC, which is fine. Because you don't really need them for... It's fine. Don't worry about it. And then Adaptive. Yeah, I mentioned all those. Brutal Slash again. I think all that other stuff is very standard. Then Diana. Diana is going to be a, a basically a cluster cluster fight it's just going to be pretty hectic it's probably going to be more of like a burst cleave kind of scenario with some single target so i've gone another similar just like single target with burst cleave things like feral frenzy i think it's still going to be good because there are certain ads that you want to burst down though i think you could absolutely drop that and go adapt uh go apex again uh just play around with it see how you feel could go uh, adaptive as well adaptive swarm um i think there's definitely going to be one of those where you play the fight and you see this boss also, I think, enrages at low health. I think. Um, yeah, P2 adds stops spawning. There's only Diana left, and she deals more and more damage. So you basically, again, this is this is like a burst down. So your single target is quite important. I think having things like Feral Frenzy is going to be important. Two minute convoke. You have the burst potential. You could even drop one there on CI and go adaptive maybe as well. But uh, play around with it a little bit. Just as long as you have the AOE elements of tear open wound and rampant primal wrath you should be fine you probably don't actually need double cord break and you can probably drop that for luna to get that additional yeah so you could probably do that drop double cord go luna and have something similar to i believe like uh teros but just with tear open wound and rampant as your options for aoe and then you can get infected in a moment which is quite nice uh in terms of razageth <laughs> watch the race to world first wait and see speaking of which actually i will be casting the race to world first i'm going to be casting for methods so make sure 
that you tune in and watch and you'll be able to see me casting and maybe we'll see what Razageth is going to be all about as well. Uh, but hopefully this was useful. I know it's a bit of a long video, but I thought I'd just do every single boss uh, together. Just get this video out for you guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching it and I appreciate it. See you in the next one.